I love being a tourist. We just got to Paris and climbed up like 10 flights of stairs with all of our suitcases to get to our Airbnb. Let me show you. I originally wasn't gonna tell this story because I'm kind of over reliving it, but I feel like I do need to mention something because this vlog is honestly very choppy without some context. Long story, kind of short, we checked into our Airbnb and I was full of life, so excited. But as soon as I started to explore the property, there were a couple of things that were just missing, such as central AC, which was advertised. Oh, there's no way. That was That's actually fraud if they don't have it. Essentials like soap, everything was just used and empty. There were stains all over the sofa where one of my friends had to sleep. Pillows were stained. The bathtub had black mold all over the tiles and in the drain. So we just like weren't comfortable staying at this property. I tried to resolve it with the host. The host was not being cooperative. Airbnb reviewed the case and decided to fully refund us for the reservation, which honestly was the best case scenario for us, but the worst case scenario for the host. That's when he got very, very, very upset while we were out having dinner. And then he just started threatening us to come back to the property ASAP. He couldn't wait for us to finish dinner or else he would throw all of our suitcases out on the street. A few of the guests went to the property to retrieve our belongings. And during all this time too, we're all just stressed at dinner, having to find new accommodation. Yeah, you can confirm. Yeah. I just got the email. As soon as the guests arrived to the property to retrieve our luggage and belongings, which also includes passports, expensive camera equipment, and all of that, the host just takes our keys, runs away, like physically, literally runs away with them, with all of our items locked in his property. So we end up calling the police. The host starts accusing us of assaulting him, calling him derogatory names regarding his sexual orientation, which neither happened. His story just wasn't adding up to the police, so they eventually make him give us back our belongings. It all works out in the end, but basically we didn't do anything the entire first day in Paris because we were dealing with this. I think it's really important to at least let you guys know if you are thinking about going to Paris because it is a very popular destination right now to book through a hotel and if you are insistent about using airbnb i would highly highly recommend you choose a property that's owned by a company not an individual this is like the last thing anybody should deal with on vacation i've received so many dms and responses from people telling me about their horror stories in paris even all the uber drivers and servers we talked to at restaurants about this story all told us that Paris is like notorious for terrible Airbnb hosts and experiences. So I guess this is just like a known thing that nobody really talks about out loud. So just keep that in mind if you are going to Paris. Whenever I'm in a new country, I always want to do the thing they're known for, AKA eating escargot and French onion soup in a small neighborhood restaurant. We only had two days in Paris, so there was a lot of ground to cover in such little time. So we hit up Musée d'Orsay right by the Seine, where iconic art by painters like Monet and Van Gogh live. It's definitely worth visiting if you're into classic French history and art. We're on our way to The 
The Palace of Versailles is about a 45 minute drive from Paris. It's a half day commitment that is totally worth scheduling into your itinerary. You want to make sure you go early though, around 9 to 10 a.m. on a weekday to avoid overwhelming crowds. We got there by 10 a.m. and the lines weren't too bad, but as we were leaving in the afternoon around 1 to 2, the lines were crazy. We've been looking for a cafe, but we keep getting distracted by everything here because it's so grand and amazing. But now we're getting back on track and looking for that cafe because we desperately need coffee right now. The entire palace was just so royal and impressive and hard to fully comprehend. Welcome to the crabs. Come on, I'll show you around. <laughs> like, imagine being so rich and so bougie back then that millions of people in the future give you their hard earned money to be in your house and garden. It's wild, it's unfathomable. Just kind of in awe and shocked at how big this garden is. We thought we pretty much saw everything, but when we checked the map, we saw like 5% of the entire garden. This place is incredible. It's insane. Also, look into renting a golf cart for the garden because it's huge and driving around in a golf cart at the Palace of Versailles is a vibe. I wish we knew about it before we got there. Everything here is just so, so stunning. Being here in Versailles was the most memorable part of the trip for me. We just made it to Cafe Kitsune. Had a good little power nap in the Uber ride back to Paris. Our first latte Ice. in Seoul. We are going to spend the rest of the day just shopping around. I don't have anything to purchase particularly. I don't have anything to purchase particularly. Yeah, so being in Paris might make you delusional and convince you and your girlfriend to channel Carrie Bradshaw and do some naughty things. But when in Paris, right? <laughs> we are waiting for the sun to set and for the Eiffel Tower to twinkle and then we are going to call it a night. This park feels like Coachella, feels like a festival. Although Paris and I got off on the wrong foot, I still appreciated its deep history and culture in the short 48 hours I had. I'm looking forward to the day I get to come back and fully immerse myself in the city.